Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to work on number 39 on the general curriculum math subtest. This is in the geometry section of the test and it's going over core concepts and core types of questions that you should be familiar with on the general curriculum. Um, and this is also a really good review for you know the 53, 47, 51, and 09 MTEL math exams. The, all these questions can be adapted into harder ones. But if you don't know the core concept, then, you know, then you're stuck. So I would go back to the general curriculum and really study it good. And if you need help on these questions, uh, definitely uh, contact me or, or I would recommend you start by going to a Harvard Square and Telmath workshop, sort of where we put all the pieces together. Because there's a lot of videos out there and it, there's nothing like a live experience where you're taking information, asking questions, working with teachers, so you can attend any of the one-day or two-day workshops, and I'm sure you'll find it very, very insightful. But anyways, so let's look at number 39 for now. Use, and by the way, this is geometry, so I'm thinking about geometry before I begin, and I'm always thinking about high, middle, low, so that first one gives me that uh, shape, the triangle. It's got some information here. It's got some more information here. Each one of them I'm going to study individually, but for now I'm just going to look at what the question asks. <laughs> Use the figure below to answer the question that follows. Okay, looks like a triangle, ABC. If equilateral triangle ABC above represents one of two congruent halves of a figure that has AB as the line of symmetry, then the entire figure is a triangle, a rectangle, a prism, or a rhombus. Great question. Why is it a great question? Well, it's because it has a lot of different parts to it, a lot of different vocabulary. And, you know, I think it's good to study the vocabulary individually before trying to go back and, you know, and then go back and understand it. First, what is an equilateral triangle? An equilateral triangle is a triangle where all the sides are equal. Okay, you may be like, uh, yeah, duh. Or you may be like, oh, i got to make a flashcard for this. I would make a flashcard. Equilateral triangle, all the sides are equal, and all because the sides are equal, the angles are equal. That's the key thing about equilateral triangles. Okay, so i got an equilateral triangle. Congruent. Congruent means equal. So this, is, this could be considered a congruent shape. That means this is equal to this. If I have that shape, and let's say I draw something called similar. Similar, if it said two shapes, the two triangles are similar. Well, what similar means, similar is not equal. Similar is similar. What does that mean? Well, for example, what if I said I took that triangle and I increased the sides by a factor of two? Well, that means that if this was a side of 1, this is now a side of 2, 2, and 2. So the sides have changed, but what makes it similar is that the angles are still the same. So similar shapes share the same angle. The angles remain the same, but the sides change. All right? Okay, now let's, um, and then it says line of symmetry. And uh, we did the we had the line of symmetry in the last question, so um, but it's saying here that I'm taking a I'm making a it has two, made up of two congruent halves and the line of symmetry is over the AB axis, so that means that the other triangle would be something like this right here, flipped over. It's a mirror image, and then it's asking which shape is formed. Well. I don't want to get into, I don't want to get too fancy into this, but this isn't a perfect square because this has got sides of 60 and this has got sides of 60 and it's got, you know, 60 and 60 is 120. But it does have equal, the angles are different. Sorry, I was saying sides. Ang the angles are 60 and 60, 120, 120. So the angles are different, but the sides are the same. And we have a special, that has a special name. It's called a rhombus. When you have a shape where all the sides are the same length, but the angles are vary, 
like 120 here, 60 here, 120 here, 160 here. Although the, I, the sides are the same, the angles are different, it's a rhombus. If it was, if it was a, uh, a square, all the sides would be the same, and all the angles would be the same, 90 degrees each. Okay, so we know the answer is D. Um, it's not a rectangle, even though um, a square is a type of rectangle with 90 degree angles, but a rectangle implies that... Um, may imply that the sides are different. You know, you will have two sets of matching sides, one being a little longer than the other. So it's not that. It's not a triangle because we had to flip it and turn that triangle into another shape, so we cross out that. And a prism, a prism involves, we can have all sort, sorts of prisms. We can have a rectangular prism. A prism is a three-dimensional shape. So this is a rectangular prism. This is a circular prism. Got a circular base. This is a triangular prism. Guess how you, you get the name of these? You name the prism based off the base. So if it has a triangular base, you say it's a triangular prism. A circular base, a circular prism. A rectangular base, a rectangular prism. That's three dimensions. We're not dealing with three dimensions. We're dealing with two dimensions and something that looks like this which gets us to oops which gets us to the answer choice of D. I would go and I if I were you and I'm not you, but if I were you, I would go and I would start making flashcards for each one of these. What are the special things about each one of these, the characteristics? And I would go back and I would make flashcards for each one of these words and concepts. What is the line of symmetry? What is an equilateral triangle? What does it mean by congruent? You know, as I go and study this problem, okay? All right, thanks team for watching. Um, check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. There's always, uh, there's always one coming up. You can attend one of the two-day workshops and be in a pretty good spot with the core math on the general curriculum, the 53, and the core math that's on the other MTEL math exams. And you'll also come away with a lot of really good strategies and current material. So I encourage you to check those out, or you can sign up for one-to-one -one tutoring um, if you're a teacher preparing for one of these math exams. And that's just not that's not just Massachusetts. That's actually um, nationally. So you can you can always go to the website and find out about that. Thanks a lot, team. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye.